you know, to him actually be, to, to be empathetic and to forgive him for it was, was interesting. And it's like, oh wow. It was a nice end to Cole's character. Um, and uh, the other really dark thing, I don't think a lot of people realize, um, was this is one of the very few seasons that killed God. Animus was not called a god explicitly, but with his power set, he was a god. He was a, a god of the earth. Um, if you really look at him, he... He was in charge with guarding the earth. He had a lot of godlike powers, um, and what one would associate with him. And he was a character. The one that he was kind of a dick. He basically went, "Well, humanity's not worthy of this. I just see them harming Earth, and I'm going to take away the wild force powers." And then that was supposedly a test. It was very interesting. But no, he was a god. And. One could argue that Zordon was maybe a god, but I find him a little bit more to be a messiah figure than an actual god. Because Zordon, he was an interdimensional being trapped in a time warp that fought evil for, for as long as he could. And he was a wizard, you know, he was, he was a wizard. And so... Oh, excuse me. He was a wizard. And th that's what he did. And yes, and, and you know, again, I see him more as a messiah figure, you know, killing him and spreading his light throughout the galaxy and, and everything, you know, cleansed it. So he's more of a, I find a messiah figure than a god figure. Animus had, had, I think he could reanimate things, he could shift his form, uh, he, he was the one, I think, that breathed life into the wild swords. Could be wrong about that, and I'm sorry if I am. But he, he did a lot of things, and he was also the protector of Earth. Um, also, he had a first in incarnation as, um, I believe it was Aratan in Turbo. Uh, with that episode where TJ, you know, was like, why, why is this boy so upset about the environment getting trashed and it ended up being, and nobody could see Aratan but him, apparently. And Aratan was, was the spirit of the environment. So, I think he had kind of a short other incarnation. Or I feel like an agent of him. I want to say it's an incarnation. Just because Forever Red came after the introduction of Animus as a character, and I just I just see him appearing as Aratan and just smiling and waving at TJ, and TJ's like, jerk. <laughs> but no, you, you, you kind of kind of God, I connected Power Rangers together. What a dork I am, but um. But uh, there, there is animus, and he, he, he does have explicit god powers. Not only do they reject God in it, and I knock Dustin off my shelf, but not only did they reject God, um, when he said, "Well, it was a test and everything," and, and you know, Merrick actually flat out rejects him. It's like I don't believe what you're doing. So you know, they reject him and say, "You know, we don't care. We're going to defend the Earth without you." And he's like, "Okay, cool. I'm going to give your powers back." But they still reject him in some way because they don't like what he's doing. But they kill him! He dies in the last battle! He, you know, Master Orc kills him! Takes him out! And, you know, he, he kind of disintegrates in the light in, in, I think it was Merrick's arms. He just dies. I'm like, did they just kill God? When I first watched that, I was like, did they just kill God? They just killed a God! Wow! And he doesn't get better or anything. He stays dead. And Cinnamon's like pitching up with my voice. It's amazing. But no, he, they kill God. I'm like, that is a very interesting, and I don't think kids are going to register that. But when you're an adult and you watch that, uh, particularly after a philosophy class, you're like, whoa. Especially in Western culture, in American culture, where we have a very weird theist culture going on. It's interesting, you know, um, we have a theist culture, and to have that, and to show that, even though they didn't explicitly say he was a god, he was kind of hinted to be one, and to show that, it was like, dang, dang bro, 
And, you know, it was, it was well handled, too. It, it actually was well handled. Uh, you know, as much as, as much as Animus pissed you off, he was very well handled, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, let's, let's talk about a little bit uh, more of the fun stuff, and, uh, kind of a real quick, kind of, one, one of the just medium stuff is, I also appreciate the fact that the characters were an all-age group, and for the most part, the adults were adults, and it made sense. In Power Rangers, they're very particular about trying to make them teenagers. Or not saying that they're teenagers, but they, they're like, no, they're totally, you know, what, like, them making them teenagers. And it does, you know, they, they want to do that, but, you know, because of the teenagers and attitude thing. But here's the deal, it doesn't make sense with some of their life experiences. It does not make sense as I, as I hit this. Because I have an attention deficit disorder. But, uh, it does not make sense for them to have that, uh, and to be those, those teenagers. So here they are, here, here are people with their life experiences, and you know, it's pretty explicit that Taylor and, and Danny are older. They are older, they're not, you know, teenagers, they're someone, they're people that I believe are codified to be mid-twenties, if you really look at them. and. Cause, you know, Danny worked a lot as a florist. That was his job and his, it sounds like his career. He was a florist and that's where he worked and that's what he did. And then you had Taylor who was in the military. I know that they said she was a lieutenant, but in actuality, if she's in charge of a squad, she should be a much higher rank. But even then, you know, she's a, she's a military officer. And to be a military officer, you do have to go through, you know, college. So, you know, she's a, she's, she's at least, you know, mid-twenties. And, um, to do all that. And, uh, you know, and then you have Alyssa who's, you know, in college. And she's around Cole's age. Cole is actually a little bit younger, but he just became an adult. So it makes sense that he's 18, uh, he's, he's actually about 1920 in the season. If you, uh, look at his tombstone, he's supposed to be about, um, 20, I think. He's about 19 to 20, but it makes sense. It's like, you are a man now and you must go on your own journey, was his thing. And then you have Max there, who's the young kid, but he's, you know, about 17, 18 probably, because, you know, nobody's like going, hey, there's a missing kid. So he's probably about 18. He's above being a minor. E either that or people really are that witless. <laughs> but no, they, they actually are their, you know, it's hinted at that they are their age and there's no like weird retcon. Oh, they're teenagers. No, they're actually, they actually kept them and their life experiences within an age group that was appropriate. At least from what I remember. If you say I'm wrong about it, then sad I am wrong. Sad face. That, that is, that is what I remembered about it. And that, that I really liked about it. And, um, and the characters are just fun. You know, as, as much as you kind of got on your nerves at times, they were a fun bunch of characters. I, I really enjoyed the, them, and we're actually a bit invested in them. You know, you, you even though, yes, the dialogue was pretty clunky and could be kind of childish at times, and so could the characters. I mean, I'm like, you're acting like a child when you're how old? So, you know, but, you know, the characters were fun. Uh, Cole was just a, a bundle of positivity, no matter what. He's like, I will always be positive because I know nothing of your human negativity. And I don't know much about spaceships. Yes, his, his manner of speak was kind of funny. Uh, everyone makes fun of Cole speak. I find it a very enduring part of his character. But I also will make fun of it, because it, it, but, you know, it, it's a very interesting, uh, syntax he had, and I think it just added to his character. What's very funny is everyone added to some degree, so it was, it was direction, or just how they were, at, they were acting, or what, I don't know. But they had, you know, weird pauses and sentences, um, so, so there's that. Um, and then there's, there's the team-up episodes. Oh my god, the team-up episodes are great this season. 
Forever Red is, I think, everyone's guilty pleasure. <laughs> it is just so, it is so gimmicky and fan service like. It is so fun. And you know, it has so many plot holes. Like how does how does Jason have his red power coin when it when it was given to Rocky? Why isn't Rocky there with the red power coin? Why, you know, why is Tommy there with the red Zeo power when the Zeo power was turned into turbo power and he gave that over to TJ? <laughs> you know? Um All that fun stuff. You, know, you, you had all this like, why, why do certain people have their powers? That was destroyed. Um, that power source was destroyed. Why do you still have your powers? <laughs> There's another one. Just, just. Oh my God! So many weird plot holes. And then, then the, and then Serpent Terra. Like, didn't Lord Zed run off with it? No, he didn't. He went out, ran off with, in a Winnebago. But, um, pretty, pretty sure something happened. I, I'm trying to remember, but I think he did run off at one point with Serpentera. And then it was buried on the moon for years. And then, and then you had the big bad beetle boys. <laughs> they reused the suits for, from, 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 from that. From that show. And, uh, I forgot what toku it was, but they reused suits from that. And, uh, they... <laughs> They were voiced by veteran rangers, but it was very distorted. Um, and, then, and then of course, you know, you had the, the fights, the fights were fun in that. I'm not gonna lie, they were really well done. Just well choreographed, very fun to watch. And then you had the, uh, the, the, freak, the freaking war sequence was fun. You got to go see all of it again. And then, um, and then, and then the end of it, where, you know, this is the only time this freaking thing shows up, this motorcycle, that Bandai basically was like, we will fund the rest of this episode if you put this motorcycle in it and, and sell it as a toy. So Cole summons this motorcycle out of nowhere and fires, uh, like, drives it into Serpentera's mouth while it's firing its laser and kills it <laughs> and blows it up. <laughs> Forever Red is so cheesy and just so you can't help but just love it. It just it does it, it doesn't It's like it doesn't try to be serious. It's like nope we are Power Rangers and we are celebrating that we are Power Rangers, damn it. And, and, and you know, it was taken somewhat seriously. You know, not not, not saying it wasn't taken seriously, but I was just like, oh my gosh. It was so goofy, but it's just so fun to watch. And like I said, the fight scenes were great in it. You know, if anything, you can just skip forward through all that and watch the fights. It, it was an, they did an amazing job on, on that. 